Hi again. This is going to be part two of an introduction to cellular automata. Uh, I just couldn't include some of the videos that I really wanted to in part one just to get through the material. Ten minutes ain't a lot of time. But if you're watching this and you're watching this before you're seeing part one, don't do it because you just aren't going to follow what, what all these rather interesting videos really mean. And uh, it's only a ten minute video, so go for it. You'll remember that von Neumann's kinematic machine, his first concept of a replicator, was a, a factory sort of process, a mechanical process. And we're going to look at one of these. Uh, Dr. Bill Stevens uh, produced such a machine. The machine was a simulation that you could see on a computer, but it's everything that a, a real machine built out of mechanical parts would be. Uh, what's really lovely about uh, Bill Stevens' Uh, machine is it's done in 3D, so rather gorgeous. Uh, it is a full uh, von Neumann kinematic machine, which means that it's also a Turing computer, primitive computer structure. Here's a kinematic machine we were talking about on the last slide. As you'll remember, the kinematic machine creates the child, the replicated child, uh, at the end of a constructor arm that's controlled through a controller and the controller is executing a uh, program, basically a blueprint of the machine. And what's happening here is that the memory unit for the child is being constructed. Construction takes place at the end of a constructor arm. Essentially, in biological terms, what's happening is in this kind of replication is that it's a form of budding. There's two biological processes that create offspring. One is to bud it off of a small section of the parent and the other is to split, split down the middle as we find in cellular division. Well, most automata, although they don't have to be, are budding kind of devices. And uh, we can see that process taking place right here. Let's move on to Langton loops. You'll remember these are much more simple cellular replicators, but they do have full heredity, uh, although they're not Turing machines. They exhibit the properties of both translation and transcription. Langton loops have been shown to have the ability to respond both to competition from other types of Langton loops and to conditions in their environment. Here we have a variety of Langton loop that actually will self-destruct or die off uh, if the conditions, the surrounding conditions, uh, have overbred the population. And so you can actually see that there is a stability, even in a finite space, of the uh, number of members of the population. Finally, I'd like to show you the emergence of self-reproducing organisms from essentially a, a soup of primitive cells that are finite automata but are not reproducing entities and just by variation uh, occurring in these cells uh, eventually we see that we have a formation of fully replicating Langton loops and emergence of life. The last example we have is for chemically modeled automata. This is where artificial chemistries essentially set the behavior of the uh, individual automata, the state machines of those automata. I'd like to present the work of uh, Dr. Tim Hutton uh, on these artificial chemistries. Uh, now, in these type of uh, units. They're not on a fixed grid anymore. The cellular automata are allowed to move. And as a matter of fact, as they meet other molecules or other atoms, uh, which essentially are the thing that the automata themselves are, uh, they can have chemical reactions based on the rules of reactions that are set up that apply to all of these automata. These are defined chemical reactions and they're global to all of, all of the automata in there. Uh, it leads to new entities, and those entities have uh, new chemical properties uh, because of the behavior of the total unit. 
And in a way, this allows us to even reach some rather unexpected results, which is pretty much the way nature works. Here is just one example of some rules of chemical reaction that have been set up that allow for several things to take place. The most interesting, the formation of membranes uh, in chemical type A and the ability to form chains uh, with type A to type F. And uh, what we see is formed is a very primitive but uh, rather representative uh, view of a chemical cell. And uh, other illustrations go on to show cell division and replication that is uh, essentially uh, genetic based. So with this particular type of model uh, we can really get an appreciation for um, how the chemistry uh, lays down some of the primary rules of cellular life. And I believe that it's from models of this type uh, that a lot of understanding of the processes of life uh, will be further enhanced. On closing, I'd like to read from a quote from John von Neumann at the end of his own work in Cellular Automata. Living organisms are very complicated aggregations of elementary parts, and by any reasonable theory of probability or thermodynamics, highly improbable. That they should occur in the world at all is a miracle of the first magnitude. The only thing which removes or mitigates this miracle is that they reproduce themselves. Therefore, if by any peculiar accident there should ever be one of them, from there on the rules of probability do not apply.